The next thing we'll review is production reporting. This is obviously a really important part as far as if you get audited, we want to be accurate on this. So all your production reports should be reported by November 14th. If you end up hauling all your barley over the winter after you've reported this production to us, on the spring crops, we actually have until April 29th to make adjustments for this current crop year on that. So if you end up being off on your bushels, you want to get it down to more of an exact. Um, as we get into the spring, when you finish hauling your grain, please let us know and we can make adjustments from what you reported in the fall on the barley. We just prefer to get this all done on the same date, uh, which would be, I think you guys would agree to, would be simpler for you as it's closer to harvest. So. For practical purposes, whether it's winter wheat or barley or canola, we'd like to have it all done by November 14th. There's a tolerance of plus or minus 5% if you're audited before they start making adjustments. So on a 10,000 bushel bin, we can be off 500 bushels um, before they're gonna start to make adjustments in the audit process. And you need to for sure keep the three most recent years of hard copy records. Biggest thing on hard copy records would be your truckload records. Um, those are technically considered soft records, I guess, but those are the things that we have the hardest time coming up with on these reviews of the truckload records. So please make sure you keep those in a safe place. Going forward, we're gonna we're developing a system to keep this in our file here for you, uh, which you'll see in the next couple slides. And try and keep recrop and summer fall separated for each unit as applicable. Record keeping requirements. The most important part of this, even if you have a yield monitor or you're marking your bins or whatever, it's still in, extremely important to keep truckload records at harvest because that's really the easiest um, most verifiable way to um, verify your records if we have an audit going forward. And the hard copy records, settlement sheets, um, fed production records, etc., must be kept for three years as well. Obviously, the settlement sheets aren't as critical because usually we can go get those back from the elevators. But if you sell to a private party, like a federal colony or a neighbor or something, make sure you keep those records for each crop year uh, somewhere that are easily accessible. Most important, though, no matter what other kind of unit structure records you're keeping and harvest, it's important to keep these truckload records as a way to verify your unit splits. So, Truckload records from the field must contain the following. Uh, the size of the truck or trailer that you're using to haul to the bins or to the elevator out of the field. The number of loads and partial loads from each unit, um, preferably by practice or type. If, if, if it's all blocked together, if you're blocking strips, at least give us an estimate of what it ran on the summer fall versus the recrop. Uh, date the load was hauled to the bin and what bin it went into I should have put on there and then the unit number or legal description so uh, other key points on this bin markings are still a good way to keep a backup of your truckload records a loss on any crop over hundred thousand dollars in any county automatically results in a three-year APH review I should have changed that slide out it's actually two hundred thousand dollars now so that as we reviewed previously in this um, that number went up which is a positive make sure you keep three years of hard copy yield records like we said truckload records settlement sheets etc this is how we'd like to have you do truckload records going forward after we report your acres here at our agency we'll actually generate a map a book of maps that'll have all your fields colored by the crop type on this map it doesn't show but over here we'll have the unit number and the section um, your approved yield and then a place to fill out your production at the bottom and we'd like you to write on the field itself that you're harvesting at the time, the date that you're harvesting it, the bin that it's going into, and then make the truckload marks down below this line. So as you can see, this is one of our truckload records. We should probably have this even cleaner than what it looks here, but for example purposes, you can see the direction we're going in here. So up here we have the trucks that we were using. So when the Ferris Custom Harvesters were harvesting these fields for us, they were 850 bushel barley loads um, on the swim. There are 1,100 bushel barley loads. So as we go down through here, where this says Roger, that's the swim loads that we were doing. So Roger harvested 450 bushels in the bottom for us on 812, and it went into bin number seven. Up here as we had the custom cutters going on 85, all of this was going into bin two, and there was one, two, three, four loads at 850 bushels plus a 400 bushel load that went into that bin. And so, the good thing about this is at the end of the year, you can bring those maps back to our office. We can actually use this as your production report if you wanted. You can sign the back page of this, and then we'll scan it, put it into your file, and if you ever get reviewed, we'll actually have this in our records um, at the office for you. So that would be another service we could provide to you. On the map-based acreage reporting, um, 
we've shifted now from you guys just turning in a spreadsheet with how many acres you have seeded in each section or unit to actually getting us the maps from the FSA before you take them in. We'll plug them in a computer and kick out a map-based report for your acreage report. Uh, there's multiple advantages to this. Um, obviously, having a visual of the actual fields colored with the correct crop is way easier to check than a report with a bunch of lines on it. So, what, how we would like to have you do this, um, fill out your maps for the FSA as soon as you finish seeding. Bring in your maps for us to copy before you go to the FSA. So. As soon as you guys finish seeding, for our purposes and for the FSAs, the sooner you can get this done, the more accurate it's going to be, and um, the sooner we can get our information back to you. Bring in your maps to us after you fill them out before you take them into the FSA for them to input. We'll input your acres just as the FSA does and print out a report for you to review and sign off on. So this process pretty much mirrors kind of what the FSA is doing, as you can see. You bring us in your maps, we actually plug them into the computer and kick out a report just like their 578, we're going to kick out your schedule of insurance for you to sign uh, to verify that it's correct on the crop insurance side. This is an example of what the cover page of your schedule will look like after we kick it out. So each one of these are different colors, uh, represent different crops. If you were to flip into the inside of this map book, you would actually see what these colors mean. But orange is wheat anyways, um, blue is peas, and then green would be barley in this scenario, I believe. So you can take a quick visual of your farm over the whole area make sure that everything looks correct at least as far as what's seeded in each field that'd be the first double check and then as you flip back through the book you'll see each it'll be drilled down to each section or unit that you can um, visually verify the shares on